Hey, what's up everyone? This is Jared and this badass looking laptop is called the Predator. This is Acer's answer to Dell's Alienware laptops. So it's like Alien versus Predator, get it? Anyways, I think it's got a very aggressive look, which I think's cool. Now at the top, we've got the Predator logo, which lights up and the whole thing's covered in this matte black rubbery soft to the touch material that feels nice and I prefer over glossy plastic, but seems to show fingerprints a bit and I can see getting scratched up if you're not careful. On the left, we've got two USB 3.0 ports, mic and headphones ports, and an SD card slot. Uh, on the right, we've got a Thunderbolt 3 port, another two USB 3.0 ports, HDMI and MIDI display ports, and a network port, which works nicely with the killer wireless AC1535802.11 AC Wi-Fi that allows you to do things like split your bandwidth between your wired and wireless connections. Now, after removing the door on the bottom, we've got access to our RAM slots and storage drives, which on this particular build includes a 512 gigabyte Samsung NVMe SSD that, by the way, is arguably one of the fastest consumer SSDs on the market today, which is accompanied as well by a one terabyte 7200 RPM hard drive. But next to the barn door is the tiny subwoofer, which is part of Acer's SoundPound 2.1 Dolby Audio sound system, with the two speakers still located on the bottom, but moved more towards the front. Uh, it sounds good, certainly much, much better than most laptops, but honestly, I wasn't all that impressed with the subwoofer. I mean, let's face it, it's tiny. Now on the back, we've got these crazy large vents, in addition to the bottom facing vents, which help keep the whole device nice and cool, but Acer's taking it a step further with the cooling. By sliding a switch on the bottom, we can remove the optical drive and replace it with the frost core by Cooler Master, which is essentially another spinning fan that's supposed to help bring down the temperature of your CPU and GPU. Now, I don't have anything to truly test it with, but based on what other very reputable reviewers said, it helps by lowering the temperature by about one or two degrees, which is better than nothing, I suppose. And for what it's worth, when it's on my lap, it never once got hot or even warm other than from my own body heat. Now opening the lid, we're greeted by the 15.6 inch 1080p IPS LCD display, which has a matte finish to it, which is nice for minimal glare. Uh, it does have pretty huge bezels, but I think it sort of works with the overall look and design of the Predator. And one thing to note, although it has a sticker that says G-Sync monitor support, they're not talking about the built-in monitor, but external monitors with G-Sync support. Now looking at the bottom half, it looks pretty crazy, huh? Well, I agree and I love it. Uh, the keyboard has four zone light which you can turn on and off via the Predator Sense app, as well as a few other cool things, which I'll talk about in a minute. Uh, the WASD and arrow buttons have a nice red outline to them. The trackpad is nice and large and has two separate right and left click buttons, which do have a bit of travel to them, but it's nothing terrible. And I think most folks will be using a mouse with this type of computer anyways, but right next to the trackpad is a little toggle button to turn the trackpad and buttons on and off, which is an awesome idea for a gaming laptop. And up above the keyboard is a profile button and five macro keys, which are also customizable from within the Predator Sense app, that in addition to you customizing your profiles, macros, and keyboard lighting, also lets you see your system and CPU temperature, as well as lets you customize your gaming mode configuration. And while in the gaming configuration, you can change things like the multimedia mode, so bouncing between the different modes, you can see how it affects the color and contrast profiles, or you can do things like kick on the fan at maximum speed if you think you're gonna get into it for a while. But just be aware that when the fans are in full swing under heavy load, uh, they do get pretty loud. So for software, obviously we're looking at Windows 10 Home Edition and there doesn't seem to be much bloatware at all other than Candy Crush Saga and the typical Microsoft apps, of course. But the added Predator specific apps include the Predator Sense app, which we've already looked at, uh, the Killer Network Manager, which is where you'll be monitoring network bandwidth, uh, selecting which apps get to use how much bandwidth, as well as using the option to split bandwidth usage between Wi-Fi and Ethernet. We've also got Dolby Audio, which has an EQ for you to mess around with, and then there's Acer Dust Defender, which every three hours blows air outwards in an attempt to rid any dust that may have built up. In theory, keeping your internals dust free, which in turn helps keep the temperature down. Now, when it comes to performance specs for a gaming laptop, Acer didn't skimp here. So what we're looking at is an Intel Core i7 6700HQ CPU, a four gigabyte NVIDIA GeForce GTX 980M dedicated GPU, and 32 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. And with all that, running most moderately demanding games should play smoothly at max settings, but when it comes to high resource demanding games, you'll probably find you'll need to play around and stick with medium to medium high settings. But the takeaway here, I guess, is the fact that you can in fact use this gaming laptop to play virtually any game just fine 
while still maintaining high graphical detail and performance. Battery life on this beast was all right for what I was using it for, uh, where I got three and a half hours of streaming Netflix and 1080p at max brightness, and two and a half hours of playing games online. And for those times when I was just browsing and checking emails and watching YouTube videos, I usually got about five to six hours if I didn't have the brightness cranked all the way. Now this particular Predator 15's build is priced at $2,500, but luckily there's several different builds to choose from to suit different budgets. That said, I think this is an awesome gaming laptop. Uh, I can tell quite a few features were very well thought out. It's got a great display, a cool aggressive look. It stays cool, especially with the frost core. Uh, it's got amazing specs, decent battery life, and all those cool profile and macro slash hockey buttons. I mean, this is a gaming laptop champion right here. So I'll have a link to Acer's Predator site in the description, but I think that's it for this one. Uh, if you liked the video, let me know by hitting that like button. And if you're new to my stuff, don't forget to subscribe for more. But thanks as always for watching, and I'll talk to you all in the next one. Cheers.